How's it going everyone? This is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I wanted to go over the frequently asked questions that I actually found on the FFXI Reddit. I'll go over my personal thoughts and answers to these questions. If you want to go read the original posts, you can just go click the link down in the description and that will take you to where these questions are. Alright, let's jump into it. The first question. What is the future of Final Fantasy XI? The future, this is really hard to say. I can't really answer it, but I know the developers are still releasing content. If you look at the content that is already out in the game and kind of like the progression, there's still going to be content to be released. Not to mention the developers have made an announcement that there's something big in the works for the 20th anniversary, which is still two years off. So there's still things coming out. We still don't have uh, gold slips to turn in, and we don't have Empyrean armor to plus two and plus three. So those are just some quick things off my head that I know that they are going to eventually release. So there's still development for the game. There's still things to happen. Uh, we just recently got a new event called Odyssey that allows you to upgrade Unity equipment. So there's still plenty to do in the game, so there's still a future for it. What about FFXI Mobile? So I keep getting this question in like my live stream and people talk about this and there seems to be some misconceptions. My understanding of it, and by all means correct me and link the source to where you're correcting me on this if I'm wrong, but my understanding of it is FFXI Mobile is going to be a mobile game that is set in the XI universe that is only going to be released in Japan and it doesn't in any way really tie into the online game as we know of it. It's just going to take place in the same universe with very many of the same NPC characters on a mobile game that you can only play in Japan. It is not the ability to play the current uh, online Final Fantasy XI on your phone. That's not what this is doing. That's not what this is. It's its own separate game just taking place in the same world of Vanadeel is my understanding of it. So that's what it is. It's not like a reissue or a, a new... I mean, it is a new... 11 game, but that's kind of how you have like, you know, 13 and then there's 13 2 and then I know there was like 10 and then 10 2. Those are like two completely separate games. I don't know if they're going over similar events from both games in the mobile, but like I said, it's a completely separate game. It's for your phone. From my understanding, it's only released in Japan and yeah, it just takes place in the world of Vanity. Is the game still active? Why, yes, yes it is. Uh, if you would have listened to my uh, question, you know, two questions ago, uh, yeah, it is very much still active. There's still a very active community. The three most popular servers during peak times have well over a thousand players on the server at a time, and plus there's additional servers. Is the game anywhere near the population that it was at back in like 75 days? No, definitely not. It's definitely dropped down. But there has been a large influx of players coming back as of the last two years of the game. So the game is very much active. I don't see the game going anywhere anytime soon, especially with the 20th anniversary, with the developers announcing something big for it that's two years out. So the game is still active and I see it being active for at least the next seven years. I haven't played and subscribed in years. Is my character still there? Yes. From my understanding, SE does not delete character data at all. In fact, they probably once every three to four months will have a Return to Van Adeel campaign where you could log into the game and play for free for like two weeks. So they don't delete character data from my understanding unless you are like permabanned, then they will actually delete your character. But outside of that, I believe they always retain the characters. 
I've seen characters restored that were like mules that I wasn't using and just had like a slot and then during the uh, free campaign they pop up and it's like oh okay uh, I could actually log on as them so even if it's been I'd say 10 years since you've played your character still exists if you wanted to come back and jump back into it. Next question, I want to return but don't have my CDs. Where do I get the game? Interestingly enough, I have a video that goes over this. You could check down in the description for a link to this. But just as a quick synopsis, you just go to playonline.com and you go in there and there's literally a link on the right hand side that you can download the game. You know, still need some updates. It's not a lot of updates, but basically you just download install the game then you're good to go you don't even need CDs anymore now if you've never purchased the game you do need to purchase a content ID so you do still need to do that so I'm looking to return but I forgot my play online ID or password what can I do well if you happened to have a Square Enix ID and you were around when they did that with like the tokens and everything if you still have your email attached to your Square Enix ID it's possible you could log in and recover your account that way if you don't happen to have a Square Enix ID or know what that is you would very likely need to contact Square Enix's customer support and talk to them and then they can recover your account after some verification processes just to make sure you are who you say you are. Is there a server link shell Reddit is on? I heard that there is a Reddit link shell out there somewhere. I don't know anything about it, so I can't really answer this question. What server should I join? And what is the best server? To be completely honest, what is the best server is really going to come down out of what are you trying to get out of uh, Final Fantasy XI. So, most people would be very quick to say, oh, go to Azura. I would be one that would actually say, no, don't just jump to Azura, because uh, I actually just server transferred from Azura to Bahamut, and have actually enjoyed uh, Bahamut. So, the question is, do you want to mostly be doing solo stuff and, you know, be doing kind of your own little thing? You might then want to go ahead and you know join a you know less populated server because that way you're not going to be competing for pops if you're say making an Empyrean item or not running around the zone looking for you know places to spawn and M's and Estia and stuff like that on the other hand if you are trying to do things with more groups and you know actually get more pickup groups you probably need to pick one of the more populated servers being Azura, Bahamut, or Odin to likely have any traction with that. If you're going to an underpopulated server and you want to do things with a group, you're likely going to have to try and track down and find a link shell that you can join that, you know, does the events that you want to do. I have a bunch of negatives I could say about Azura. Uh, a lot of people, you know, just like to buy CP points. No one really wants to, like, do CP parties, at least as of, the, as of the time when I left the server. And it only seemed to be getting worse. Uh, a lot of people just, you know, buy equipment and content um, from, you know, mercenaries selling it. Which was another thing that I had a problem with, which is why I left. So... I mean, again, what server is the best? I think it really comes down to your criteria. Are you someone that is about pay to win and just wants to do that? Then probably Azura would be your bet, although I would personally never recommend that for anyone. Are you just trying to solo and do your own thing and don't even want to get into high-end content? Then finding one of the least populated servers so you can just kind of be solo and doing your own thing would be your best bet. I would find that most people would probably be somewhere in the middle, so you'd probably be best off going to, say, Odin or Bahamut. But you'd probably be best off going to Final Fantasy Auction House, or FFXIAH, which is Final Fantasy Auction House, um, dot com. 
and then going there and then reading over on the forums uh, the different servers and maybe finding one that's more to your personal liking where you would feel you would fit the best in. That's honestly the best answer I can get because every single person's different. So your requirements are very likely different. The game seems empty. Why is that? Well, again, I think it's going to come down to uh, what server you are on. If you are on, say, Azure Bahamut, if you go to Mara, I think you will very quickly see that it is not empty because, you know, there's so many people by the home point crystal. Although I'm sure if you were on one of these less populated servers, then yeah, I could see that you're not really finding any people. But... Like I said, the top three servers I know have well over a thousand people during uh, its peak prime time, so it's definitely not empty. I, I think it's just going to come down to each individual server. So does it still take a long time to level up to max? And no, it does not at all. It's unlike what it used to take, like a couple months to get a brand new character from 1 to level 75. Now if you know what you're doing and exactly what missions and quests to clear just to get through everything you need to to get to 99, if there's an XP campaign, you could take a brand spanking new character and get to level cap in under 6 hours I would say. For someone who doesn't know, obviously you could easily double or triple that, plus go ahead and double that time if there is not an XP campaign going on. But yes, you can very easily, within a weekend of grinding out, get to max level with a brand new character, even if there is not a campaign going on to help you level up. It is not hard, and I actually have guides that go over how you go from level one all the way to item level 119. So if you want some help with that and you're returning, just go ahead and check down in the description for a link to my guides for new players. So on to the next question. Is grinding still as essential to the game as it ever was? Quick answer for that is yes. While the game isn't as grindy as it used to be, it is still very much grindy. If you're trying to work on any high-end equipment, uh, you are going to likely be grinding, even if you're just grinding for gill, or if, say, you're working on an ultimate weapon, you're going to be grinding for currency or alexandrite or whatever type of currency you're going to be doing. There is definitely still grinding going on. Luckily, it's not as bad as it used to be. Also, if, say, you're grinding for, like, Riftborn Boulders or Plutons, luckily there is a wide variety of different events that you can actually get those items from. So, while it is still grindy to, say, get said items, you can actually mix it up what events you're doing to get the items. So, it's not as, you know, dry and boring as it is used to be but yes grinding is still very much a part of the final fantasy 11 game i missed the old ffxi typical xp parties etc what can i do well so outside of going to a private server which honestly a lot of them are crap in my opinion it honestly more bastardizes the original game than I think then really like captures that old environment one server i can't speak on to that i wanted to check out was eden that might be able to recapture that i don't know like i said haven't actually tried that one out but a lot of the other servers that i've tried i have problems with and i personally don't like it um they do have in retail 11 um these new points called cp points or job points which essentially it's an experience after you've hit a level cap for any high level mobs you will actually gain these points and there are parties called CP parties these are probably the closest thing you have to the old school leveling type of party it is faster pace of course because you're high level with high end gear but it is the closest thing that I can say to having an old school XP party. So there is still the essence of it 
here, but it is still different. So if you are looking for that, you know, synergy, building parties, old school thing, you would probably have to find a private server to really relive that. Uh, you're only getting a shadow of what that was like on current retail. I heard the level cap change. What is it now? Well, the level cap for character is 99. However, we now have item level on gears, which gives stats, which, you know, basically make you higher. The item level cap is 119. However, it's really higher than that. Uh, 119 is just the highest tier of gear you can get. But there is a wide variety in what stats are on 119 gear. And honestly, if you are a fully topped out character, you're more likely like 135 to 145, somewhere in that range for what your true like item level would be in stats. And considering there is content that goes up to like 150, and it warns you when you're before you're gonna do that content. We're in that ballpark for if you have top end gear in stats. Has soloing changed at all? Well, I'd say it's changed quite a bit because now there are these things called trusts or faiths, and these are basically NPCs that you can summon to form up to a party of six. So. Considering some people have arguments about this, basically being like, well, if you do an event with trust, you're not really solo. Where I technically disagree because I could be the only person logged into the server and then still go do said content with trust, which still means I'm solo. Now, if you want to say a true solo, meaning that you are the only, you know, character and there's no supporting characters helping you out, sure, then you can call that a true solo for whatever event. But the way I see it is if I'm able to do the event without any other player character uh, helping me out, then it is still technically solo. So the fact that you can have a full party of six for, mm, I'll say, 85% of all content in the game, yeah, that completely changes on what you can solo and what you're capable of. And especially with, as I just went over in the last question, that you are really like level one, you know, say 45, if you're completely topped out, high-end character, being that level, yeah, you can pretty much just smash anything that was in 75-day content. So yeah, soloing has changed quite a bit. What upcoming content is there to look forward to? Well, considering the developers pretty much keep us in the dark until about a week before the update, and a monthly update happens around the 11th, it's not always, but basically it's around the 11th of every month is when we're going to get the version update for said month, and any new content will be released around that time. The newest event that we just got was an event called Odyssey, where you basically go in a zone and fight some mobs. You can fight some notorious monsters, and essentially you get items that allow you to upgrade Unity equipment. Unity equipment is basically item level version of a notorious monster that was in the game from back in 75 days. Like a good example would be like Jalcy or Joy Toy NM. Um, there is a mob that you can pop with a certain type of currency that is very similar to that mob. You defeat him, you'll get a chest, you can go ahead and pop the chests, and you have a chance of getting an item that is item level equivalent of that 75 version. So it's repurposing the equipment. And since they released Odyssey, you can actually upgrade that equipment. Now, they didn't go over all the Unity NMs. I actually see more content coming out for Odyssey in the future. I would say that is the main focal point for new content is going to be Odyssey for now, as they're going to be releasing probably new floors to Odyssey, along with you know higher level gear being able to be augmented. The other two things that are prominent in my mind that I'm waiting to see what they're going to do with. So we have 
copper vouchers and silver vouchers currently which you can use for various different things so i'm waiting to see what the gold vouchers are going to be if and when we get them i'm sure we will get them at some point and then we now can upgrade artifact and relic to a plus three version in item level of what it used to be and typically this gear is absurd um empyrean armor can only currently go to plus one and it was like that for artifact and relic too first they allowed artifact to be upgraded through doing an event called omen and then when they released dynamis divergence we were able to upgrade our relic equipment now to plus three so i'm sure at some point there's going to be some new events that will come out that will allow us to upgrade our empyrean armor to plus two and then plus three versions of said gear I want to play for the story. How viable is this without help? Well, this is probably one of the most viable things you can outright do. While you should probably just get to say rank 6 and then get to level 99, then start going through the story, you can pretty much solo all missions. I can't think of any missions that you can't solo or that i haven't soloed going through so considering the vast majority of missions were also built for 75 content and the level cap restriction has been removed so you would basically be going through it if you've reached a uh, max level of being at least 119 you should have a very 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 easy time going through and doing story missions probably the only time you're going to have somewhat of a challenge is going to be when you're reaching the end of rhapsody of vanadil missions but you can still completely solo it so that is a very viable option is the game free to play or will it be free to play in the future? No, the game is not free to play. And while I do think that, I don't necessarily think it should be free to play, but I do think they should do something, you know, the game's 18 years old at the time of this recording. You know, I feel like they should give some sort of a discount, at least if you've been, you know, paying for say more than five years or something. I feel they should do some kind of incentive you know or drop the price that would entice people more likely to play and i don't think that they have any desire to do that i don't think that they will maybe they'll do something come the 20th anniversary i don't know but i see no signs i don't ever see it going free to play but i would be interested in more seeing you know the subscription cost drop or bundling it with say 14 even though i'm not a huge fan of 14 or something along those lines they really should do something that would help bolster the player base in terms of cost i think even if you lower the cost you would get more people and i think you'd probably end up getting more profits out of that but i just don't see it happening can I still play on Xbox or PS2? The answer is no. They discontinued uh, console support. You now have to play on PC and that is your only option. However, you can get all of the software for free. So if you played on PS2 or 360, you can just go ahead and download the software, install it on a computer, and then plug in all your information and log in and start playing as long as your subscription's active. What is Windower and can I get banned for it? Windower is a third party application that was created to enhance 11 use. Considering it is a third party program that is interfacing and doing things with 11, it does violate the uh, terms of service that you click to accept every time you log in. And so, yes, using Windower is a bannable offense, and I mean, that's what it is. Will you get banned if you use Windower? If you're just using Windower and only using basic plugins, no, you're not likely to get banned. You, where you're going to get banned is when you are doing things like uh, position hacking, so that way you can just kind of teleport to wherever you want, or doing things in game that are exploitive. Um, they don't seem to care and have 
pretty much laxed and probably over I would say over 90% of the community uses uh, either a Sheeta or Windower. I personally don't. I personally prefer just using Vanilla 11. Not to mention they've added quite a lot of quality of life updates to 11. You don't really need Windower as much as you really did back in the day. A lot of the quality of life things, having timers on buffs, being able to like change all your equipment one macro, they've added features in the actual game that do all that stuff without actually needing you know a third party program to do it so i personally don't think you need it i prefer playing without it but as long as you're not you know exploiting anything in the game you're not very likely to get banned although i'll go back to what i said before it is technically a violation of the terms of service so there's always that chance how is XYZ job now? I mean, the jobs for the most part have all kind of changed, but at the same time as how they've changed, they've kind of also stayed the same. They kind of do the same things that they basically did before, just kind of a little more efficiently. The only thing I can really say, whatever jobs that you really think of, like Paladin, Paladin's still like the main super tank. Ninja can still blinky tank all of the things, you know, like single target, like take no damage, keeping shadows up type deal. Mages are, you know, all the mage stuff. I mean, there's not really much to say without digging into each job. Like I said, there's been changes and updates for everyone, but without sitting here and going through each individual job, I, there's not really much to say. The only thing I can say is a lot of DD jobs have kind of almost blend it together with the fact of just capping haste and just like spamming weapon skulls out for the most part but i mean of course each dd job has different types of job abilities that do different things so while i think a lot of the dd jobs have kind of blended together they still have you know bring their own unique thing to the table does the game still use play online sadly yes yes it does and i wish they'd do something about that does it still take a long time to update slash install the game? Yes, yes it does, but it doesn't take anywhere near as bad as it used to. If you're doing a fresh install, you're probably looking at between installing all the, downloading all the software, installing the software, and then going through getting your information all plugged in, and then, you know, downloading updates from the server before you're getting on. You, on a reasonable computer, you're probably looking at somewhere between one to two hours. While that's a very long time in nowadays standards in terms of computing just to get a program installed and, you know, for you to actually start functioning it. Compared to when I know it literally took a month uh, from my friend who was trying to use dial-up to get on, uh, you know, the servers when he was on his PS2. Uh, it's a little bit different of a degree, but yes, it's not as bad as it used to, but it's still an absurd process that still takes way longer than it should. Is there a monthly fee? Yes, there is a monthly subscription fee. It's something like $12 a month to uh, log into the game. And then if you want additional characters, it's an extra dollar. Along with, um, they added these things called wardrobes, which just help for space. And it's where you can store armor. You get uh, the first and second wardrobe for th free. If you want the third and fourth wardrobe, which are highly recommended considering how many items you typically use in the game, they are additional dollar a month for each wardrobe. Does the game still charge the once per month billing cycle instead of a 30 day billing cycle like most MMOs? I don't know when this switched, but no, they actually use the 30 day billing update now so it's actually every 30 days rather than once a month so yeah you're more likely to if you're paying all year you're probably going to pay you know 12 and a half times a year as an example as opposed to just 12. so i'm missing only a couple expansions or add-ons what's the best way to go about getting them uh the best way i would say is to just go purchase the uh ultimate seekers collection that just gives you all the expansions all together i don't think there is really a way just to get say the one or two expansions that you're missing 
I think it's now you just need to get the bundled pack, what I'd say is the cleanest and easiest way to go about doing that. Will Square Enix be adding new story content? I mean, they keep adding content, but in terms of story content? I mean, who's to really say? I personally think that there will be. I think there's going to be some type of story content that will come out when they do the 20th anniversary. But as I've gone over in some of the other questions, they do still release updates. And like a few months back, uh, Siren was released. And that actually went over some like story elements and some cutscenes in the game. If you've played through uh, Seekers and all of Rhapsody of Vanadeel, there was some story stuff wrapped in there. So, I mean, technically, you're still getting kind of drip-fed story content through updates, although it's very, very minuscule. But, I mean, there's always the possibility, and I personally do see something story-based coming in, was it 2022 for the uh, 20th anniversary? but only time will tell. So will FFXI ever be available on a newer console? Again, who knows? Uh, this is kind of up to Square Enix if they so choose. I could potentially see it possible. Um, definitely for what the game you know, runs on, if you were to put it on say PS4, PS5, or Xbox One, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be capable of running it. It by all means should, so I don't know why they don't try and add it to uh, some of the newer consoles. This might be something that we see come the 20th anniversary. They said it's some, supposed to be something big, so it will be interesting to see what they do. So There are no spoken of plans of bringing it to console anytime soon, but like, who knows? Uh, I hope it does. They keep doing all these other remakes for you know, different Final Fantasy games and stuff, so, you know, keep your fingers crossed and they, uh, just might for the future. Is Square Enix planning for a 75 era server? I don't believe that they are. They might do something like that if they get enough people, you know, interested in it. I think it also would kind of depend on the success of, like, how WoW Classic is going. If that starts booming well, and I think if they get enough feedback saying, hey, we would like a Classic 75 server. As of the time of me recording this, there is no evidence. I don't have any inkling of thinking that they're going to be coming out with a official retail level 75 era server. I just don't see it happening. Are there any plans for an offline standalone FFXI? Um, I think in the essence of how this question is being asked, the answer is no, but considering what Final Fantasy Mobile is, I kind of see that being the answer to this question and saying yes, but again, that's only coming out in Japan, and from my understanding, it's just a completely different game just taking place in the same world and universe of Final Fantasy XI. So, I almost see this more as like, oh, are we going to get like a, you know standalone single player Final Fantasy 11, you know, available for PS5 to download and play with updated graphics and stuff like that. I don't believe they have plans to do that is how I'm kind of reading this question. Um, you know, it's like an offline standalone. I don't think that's going to be the case. This was always designed to be a multiplayer game. So, yeah. And the last question on this site. What is FFXI or how does it differ from 14? This is not a simple question to answer. I'll try and go over this as best I can. Um, so 11 was originally, that was originally made as Square Enix's first MMORPG. And they have put a lot of emphasis on basically working as a team. Um, they really want it team mechanics and community building was the the center piece of how 11 was built from way back in the days uh, of course a lot of that has you know gone away as the amount of people playing has dropped hence why we now have trusts and everything but i still see that that's kind of there considering 
Like, if you're gonna go do Dynamis Divergence, you need to be doing it with a group. You have, like, Ambuscade. You, you, uh, to get maximum profits out of that, you need to be doing it as a group. There's definitely events where you need at least three people just to enter it. So there is still community there. It's just nowhere even remotely close to the level that it used to be. Also, the game isn't anywhere as brutal as it used to be. Like, dying and home pointing isn't really a big deal. People kind of do it without batting an eye. Whereas, back in 75 days, if you died, you would be, you know, sending towels and, and like, trying to jump through hoops through your dead body to have someone come out and raise you just so you're not losing that experience points. And it's not anything like that anymore. So, like I said, completely different game uh, than it used to be. Well, I shouldn't say completely different. Like, the essence is still there, but it, it, is, it is different. As for 14, 14, I like to call it essentially Final Fantasy Arcade. It's kind of a jump in, go get some stuff done, and jump out type of thing. 14, for the most part, to me, kind of feels like, you know, it is an MMO RPG, but for the most part, I feel like I'm always just, like, soloing something. Even when you, like, go and do a dungeon, you're doing your thing, and the other people that are with you are doing their thing, their role in the dungeon, and as long as everyone does their role efficiently, you're gonna clear. And I just, I don't see community in 14 like there was and even still is in 11 because there's still link shells are uh, a thing in 11 it's nowhere near as big as it used to be but again you still need like a large group to be clearing dynamis divergence if you're trying to work on like aeonic weapons you're going to be going through and trying to do that with your link shell where you're going to have a large group of people typically more than like nine people going through doing those clears so, I mean, they're both MMOs, they're both kind of in the same vein of, you know, sword and sorcery um, games, but they are just vastly different in uh, terms of scope. Like I said, I see 14 more as, like, jump in, jump out, arcade, go in, you know, have some fun, you will team up with people, but... You're going to do your thing, they're going to do their thing, and as long as everyone does a good enough job, you will clear. The only exceptions to that might be brand new high-end raids. Uh, and that's where you're not really going to be relying on pickup groups and duty finder. You're going to be relying you know, more on your link shell or friends that you know that are going to be high-end that are going to be up for the challenge of raids. The other large difference that I see between 11 and 14, and this is probably the main reason why I prefer 11. 11, for the longest time, and now they have broken this model a couple of times, which is typically when you've had the mass exoduses of people leaving when they have switched from this, but 11, for the most part, has been horizontal progression. Like I said, there's been two different times where I can see that they switched it for to vertical progression. Whereas Final Fantasy XIV has always been vertical progression. And you might be sitting there saying, horizontal progression, vertical progression, what are you talking about? In Final Fantasy XI, you're always trying to obtain gear for your character and just to improve it and make your character stronger. The thing about it is, for the most part, there's kind of like a bar and it doesn't really move. It'll eventually move and it'll shift, but it's not even moving that much. And like I said, when it's moving, it's basically moving on like a horizontal scale. So that way, you know, the last year you've spent playing the game, accumulating all this gear, when they adjust that bar, you're not really losing out. All, of the, all that gear that you obtained is still relevant, is still good, and still helps you out. And that little movement that can get you some new gear, it might supplement one or two pieces, but for the most part, you should be fine with what you have, and, you know, nothing's really game-breaking with the new pieces. Whereas 14 has always been vertical progression. If you go ahead and say you played the crap out of 14 and you are literally your character can't get any stronger you got all the best equipment you're the highest item level it is and then you go ahead and take a two month break you log back in and now all of a sudden you are no longer at the top 
they just released uh, a new raid um, and that has all new gear that dwarfs your old gear I mean every few months with uh, 14 the item level gets raised and then it gets raised again and then it get raised again so if you are not constantly trying to progress and be top end you won't be top end whereas you could play 11 get top end stop playing for six months come back and maybe one or two of the pieces that you have could be slightly better but it's not even that big of a deal whereas if you stop playing 14 for six months you come back there's going to be all new dungeons you got to unlock. There's going to be all new gear, all new tombstones that you need to obtain so you can buy even not even the top end gear, like the second or third best tier gear that's going to be better than the top end gear that you had 6 months ago. So, that's the problem that I have with 14 and that's what I mean by vertical progression and horizontal progression. So, I personally like horizontal progression i don't like feeling like every two months all the time i invested in the game just got thrown away because i could now go do this and that's going to replace everything i just did whereas you don't have that in 11 if i spent six months working on getting an ultimate weapon i have that ultimate weapon and maybe they'll release something else that allows me to upgrade that ultimate weapon further but I'm not throwing it away. Whereas I actually remember throwing away Zodiac weapons back in 14, which was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back why I stopped playing 14. And to me, that's the two biggest differences between 11 and 14. Uh, there are a lot of differences. Uh, 14 is much prettier, but it is a much newer game. Uh, Square Enix has always put a lot of time, energy, and effort into making games look pretty. But to be fair, 11 is very pretty too. It's just it's also <laughs> very outdated. Uh, even at its highest resolution, it does look pretty good, but it just doesn't hold a candle to uh, what 14 uh, can do. Nor would I expect it when you have a game that was released that much later. And that covers all the questions off of the Reddit. So I would be more than happy to, say, do this frequently asked questions thing. Say, you know, once a month. If you guys have any questions that you would like me to answer, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment with whatever your question is. And I'd be more than happy to compile them and, like I said, do this going forward give my thoughts and answer any questions that the community has thank you guys for tuning in thank you for supporting the channel and may you have success in all you do